On the Atlantic coast, opposite La Rochelle, lies Ile de Ré. The 30-kilometer-long island has a uniquely mild climate, second only to Corsica as the sunniest place in France. Ideal conditions for the growth of white gold, the very pure salt renowned for its flavor far beyond France. The island is known for its spring potatoes and oysters. A local speciality is mussels with crème fraîche and white wine. I'm making a mouclade retez, a salt maker, so a hot mouclade. James Renault and his wife Maud work in their salt garden every day of the summer. We work with something that is completely natural and magical. It comes from the sea and becomes solid. James and I are like big kids. This is enough for us. There are many salt gardens in the west of Ile de Ré. They were established by monks who were already harvesting the sea for the precious salt. Nowadays, about 80 salt workers harvest the silver to snow white crystals from June through to September. Most precious is the fleur de sel, the salt flower. Evaporation allows it to form on the surface of the water and it's always harvested in the afternoon, but only if the weather plays along. James Renault has tried out several professions, optician, stage builder, and even sailor. In 2001, he and Maud came to the Ile de Ré to dedicate themselves to the salt fields. The physically demanding job is rarely done by women, but former graphic designer Maud works just as effectively as James. James's daughter, Zoe, from his first marriage, spends the summer holidays on the island. She helps James and Maud with the first harvest of the freshly dried fleur de sel and gets rid of any particles of dirt. The salt flower is called white gold. We live from it. The salt flower stays the same shape as when we collect it. It isn't washed or bleached, just dried in the sun. When you cut open a fresh tomato from the garden and add a little fleur de sel, it brings out its entire flavor. The salt also has a unique aroma, a floral note. This is what the salt garden looked like when James and Maud took it over in 2005, having been idle for 40 years. For the two new islanders, it was difficult to get one at all. Owners would rather see their gardens grow wild than rent or sell them. We shaped all the basins ourselves, by hand. With the clay we removed, we made the new pathways. It usually takes four years to rebuild a salt garden like this. It took us two. We were very determined. We worked every single day, even in winter. For two years, we thought of nothing else. We wanted to experience the magic of the salt garden, see it sparkle with salt. We knew Mother Earth would be on our side. Maud and James don't just harvest salt. On the edge of the garden, wild samphire also grows. It's the only plant that needs a salty soil to grow in. Maud and Zoe are gathering some for dinner. The taste is unique. They are crunchy, fresh, and pleasant to eat. They contain a lot of iodine. I think they're delicious. They have to be tried. There you are. How was the harvest? Not bad. Perfect. I just have to cook something for the salad. You could cook it directly in water. 
Mais moi, je préfère les faire à la vapeur parce qu'il y a. But I like to steam them so they stay crunchy. This way, they don't touch the water and they keep their flavor. They don't need more than seven, eight minutes. On peut la manger donc de cette façon. You can eat them like green beans, put them in vinegar, or make a base sauce out of them for things like fish. You can prepare them in different ways. Donc en fait, on peut les travailler de différentes sortes. Zoe is chopping shallots for the samphire salad and the mouclade retez, a mussel dish. Green and red tomatoes and peppers also go into the salad. Okay, some fat. A little bit there. And maybe a little more. James sweats the shallots before adding the mussels. I add a little saffron. The aromatic stigmas not only provide a yellow hue, but also add some spice to the flavor. Fresh parsley and a shot of cognac are also added. And some white wine. The mussels are cooked for 15 minutes in the homemade stock. But first, the more important ingredient. Plenty of crème fraîche. Voilà. Hop là. In the meantime, James gets the salad ready. First, the tomatoes and peppers with freshly harvested fleur de sel. On top, the cooled samphire, and finally, dressing made from olive oil, balsamic vinegar, mustard, and peppercorns. James gives the pot a shake to make sure the sauce gets into the mussels. Mmm, it's good. It's very well. James and Maud have invited some friends over for dinner. Here's the mouclade. You're the chef. <laughs> There's little time for socializing in the summer, making this evening with friends in the salt garden particularly special. Bon appétit, my friends. <laughs> In the harbour in the capital, Saint Martin de Ré, locals and tourists come together and enjoy the evening sunshine. Zoe and her friends like to stroll amongst the bustle, enjoying the atmosphere of the evening market and the ice cream. Zoe lives in the east of France, in Besançon, where she's finding her feet as an actress. The Ile de Ré and her friends have been a part of her life since she was very small. She likes coming here to help her family. I like combining the practical and pleasure, to work and see my friends again at the same time. We can party together from time to time. Not too much. Oh, we still need to work. We have to get up early. Also to see the sea. We have pleasant conditions. Of course we work, but we're lucky enough to live on this island. Like a holiday that isn't a holiday. Zoe's boyfriend, Sébastien, wants to stay on the island and work with salt, like James. I could imagine that, but I want to carry on acting and live on the mainland. I have some good projects with my friends in Besançon. The Ile de Ré has a unique microclimate 
with the Gulf Stream heating the sea. The island enjoys an average of 2,800 hours of sunshine a year, making it a popular holiday destination. James and Maud live on the east of the island, in the larger town sainte marie de Ré. From here, it's 16 kilometers to their salt garden. Peak season begins at the start of July, and it's the first time Maud and Zoe are setting up their own salt stall at the market. The season began just a month ago, which means there's a lot of work packaging the salt products, and there's the work in the salt garden. Here's the herbal salt, and you can put the fleur de sel there. This is when the busiest time starts, getting up early to set up the stall at 7.30. We sell until 1.30. By the time we've packed everything up, it's usually 3 o'clock. At 4.30, we have to be in the salt garden to harvest, usually well into the night. We're only home at 11, or half past. We quickly eat something, and there's still work to do for the next day. We're lucky if we get to bed at 1, but usually it's not till 2 in the morning. In peak season, James and Maud work seven days a week. They have to earn their annual income during this time. At home, James is listening to the weather report. Last year, there were a lot of summer storms, a disaster for them. Mesdames, Messieurs, bonjour. Aujourd'hui, c'est le début d'un épisode caniculaire précoce sur notre pays, d'intensité significative et durable, nécessitant une vigilance particulière. Je vous incite donc à consulter régulièrement la carte de vigilance de Météo France, ainsi que les conseils de comportement associés. On monte euh, à 35 This afternoon, it's going to reach 35 degrees. Not a good sign. It means the wind is turning and coming from the south. And south wind means rain. There could be a thunderstorm and rain would cut down our production. James is making a caramel cream as an ingredient for his lunch. Caramel mustn't smolder. You have to stand by and watch it. Otherwise, it will burn and taste bitter and unpleasant. You can see it's starting to color now. That happens fast. My grandmother taught me how to cook. Well, to bake. My mother too. Soon the caramel becomes liquid. Small bubbles means it's done. Grosse bulle, petite bulle, qui dit petite bulle dit cuisson, pratiquement fini. But then it starts to burn after all. Merde. He tries cooling it with cream. That was too quick. Maybe it can still be saved. Ah, it's working. Can you smell that? The caramel is saved. Butter makes it creamy and improves the flavor. And finally, the fleur de sel, to add a little bit of spice to the caramel. Now I immediately cool it. Well. The cream will be the base for a marinade James is making. He adds some lime juice, a mixture of pepper, herbs, and soy sauce. The marinade is for the prawns that will be served for lunch. It's the creative chef's own recipe. 
Not everyone cooks with caramel cream. People usually think of it as a dessert. I wanted to try a slightly sweet, salty recipe. Why not with prawns? Marinated in a caramel cream, slightly spicy, with soy sauce and lime to give it all some freshness. And then heat it à la plancha. Add the rest of the marinade, flambé it in cognac, and the guests love it. And the hungry guests are never far away. Hi, Isa. How are you? I bought this from the market. How nice. I'm making flambé prawns. Would you like some? Oh, sounds lovely. Come in, come in. Isabelle knows James and Maud from the market. She's a vegetable farmer and also plants flowers. Whatever she doesn't sell, she's happy to trade for a tasty meal. James's experimental cooking is very popular with his family and friends. There's always a new taste and idea to look forward to. James's prawn dish has become a classic. There you are. How was the market? Yeah, it smells good. Here's the prawns. You like them? Once the prawns are cooked, they're flambéed with a shot of cognac. This one's for you. So how was the market? Quite tough, these prawns. With the fingers, careful, they're hot. Thank you, Dad. James and Maud can't live off selling salt alone, so they regularly create new products with exotic ingredients. And the first mixture has more pepper. Now I'll write it down so we don't confuse them. We are trying a new salt mixture with a famous red cambot pepper from Cambodia. It has a very strong aroma. What do you think of the kaffir lime and the yuzu fruit? No, it's not bad. Is it too strong? You taste the kaffir lime less. It smothers the other interesting spices. Yeah, the pepper dominates. There is a gram of red pepper and the same amount of yuzu fruit and kaffir lime. In the second mix, there's more pepper and lime, but less yuzu. You taste the pepper less. And then take a drink and dry the second one. As the red kampot pepper has a fruity taste, we want to make a special mix with it, which is why we're trying to combine it with the kaffir lime and the yuzu fruit. The kaffir lime adds the salty note. It tastes a little of ginger, lemongrass and coriander. The yuzu adds a fruity note. That is a little like lemon and tangerine. Now we need to find a balance for the two to make the pepper stand out, which is at the heart of the mixture. James and Maud's salt garden lies in the middle of the island. The drive usually takes 20 minutes, but soon it will be at least twice that. In the holidays, the mass of tourists block the roads. The rough salt is harvested every two days. It doesn't float on the surface like the fleur de sel, but instead collects at the bottom. James and Maud are careful with their work. If the salt comes into contact with the clay, it turns gray. They extract an average of 40 tons a year. 
the wheelbarrow is not much help anymore. Usually James moves the salt with a friend's tractor, but it's being repaired. So he's giving his old tractor a try. The last time it started was over a year ago. The tractor is 40 years old and has more than 10,000 hours of driving under its bonnet. In spite of the aggressive sea air, it's indestructible. The alarming weather forecast threatening thunderstorms and rain has not materialized. The island has its own climate, when it's raining on the mainland, the sun often shines here. Like the farmers and the fishermen, the salt workers are at the mercy of Mother Nature. The business risk is high, and the hard work does not guarantee a regular income. We know our salt garden inside out, every pool, every little floor. We improve it every year, give it a new polish. There's always a lot to do. As a salt worker, you're always happy at the end of a hard season in which a lot of salt was produced. The salt garden is then closed and flooded, but after two months, once we've recovered, we miss the daily work. I like that the job brings you close to nature. You gain energy. That's what I appreciate about it. Sculptor Frank Michel lives right by the coast. He's friends with Maud and James. In his studio garden, 20 to 30 chickens, no one knows exactly how many, enjoy a tranquil life. It's only now and again that the odd one disappears. Frank's favorite dishes are chicken and oysters. Merci. Both are on the menu tonight. It's a mixture of thyme, red onion, paprika, cumin, mustard, mustard seed, black pepper, pepperoni, and oregano. We use these spices for the salt crust. I'm also making garlic croutons. My mother and my grandmother also rubbed small croutons with garlic for stuffing the chicken. It makes a great taste. I pour a little cider onto the croutons so the bread swells. That and the salt crust give the chicken a special flavor. For James and his family, the garden is an oasis of calm. The right place to recuperate from the hard work in the salt garden, where they will be working for the next two months. To make sure the salt stays on the skin, James pours cider over the chicken. Frank removes the oysters from their shell and then poaches them. He likes his cooked. So he and James prefer them as they come, raw. They're so tasty. The chickens in the salt crust go into the oven for two hours at 200 degrees. They emit an aroma that has people coming from far and wide. Chicken in salt crust. 
The other salt workers are also sitting around the table. Everyone is happy with the start of the season. <laughs> we already have 10 times more than the mini harvest last year. Well, it's not hard. <laughs> now we're harvesting mountains of salt, we have good wind, and we're producing a lot of fleur de sel. And if the harvest stays this way, then it will be a successful season.